Hello friends, today we are going to learn a new branch of uh, science, this is statistics and our today's learning is a master class for statistics fundamentals. We will learn in this class descriptive statistics and, and then we learn about uh, inferential statistics. Let's go! Uh, in this branch, in this class, uh, we will learn population and sample, graphical statistics and descriptive statistics. Let's make a little you know, introduction to statistics and uh, I would like to start with a little quote from a Mark Twain. He said to you know, the Israeli that uh, there are three kinds of lies, you know, kind of lies, dumb lies and statistics. He thought that Statistics, statistics is the biggest lie. Why? Because sometimes the statistics, uh, when we, we gather the information about the something data, I mean, and this data uh, maybe will not be appropriate and will not demonstrate all the truth of the life. And therefore, uh, he thought about that. And uh, what's the statistics? Statistics presented summarized data, the data we collect from the objects and uh, uh, with the uh, you know, help of this data, we do some kind of manipulation and say something about the future. And then methodology for presenting data and for drawing conclusion or inference from data. For instance, we have a data and uh, from this data, we can manipulate them. And after manipulation, we can make a little, you know, kind of correction or in a under some kind of percentage, we can say about the future. For instance, if we have a data about the uh, you know, temperature and uh, ice cream sales. Uh, if you have a data, for instance, for about uh, 10 days and 20 days, uh, data uh, in which temperatures we, how many or how much uh, ice cream we sell, from, from this data, we can uh, make a little protection, uh, pro uh, forecast about the future. And, and the thirdly, we have a random variables arising from sampling. Uh, let's start with the population. What's the population and what's the sample? Okay, uh, let's uh, start from here. A population is a consist of all items and individuals about which you want to draw a conclusion. The population is a large group. You know, uh, when I, you know, talk about the population, uh, I don't say uh, only about the big groups and big groups of uh, information. For instance, we can say about, you know, American or United States or Canada's uh, people who live there, they, I mean about the in inhabitants, they are, you know, uh, big group, large group. For instance, in America, uh, I, I mean about the United States, live about 300 million people. This is a population. If you want to measure their height or maybe their weight, it's very hard and very, uh, at least, uh, you know, hardly impossible thing that uh, to, to measure all their height because if you start to measure them from today uh, time by time the measurement is uh, changing because in the at that time we can measure at that time you can measure immediately but if you take a lot of time for this and measure them time by time it will take you a lot of time and in this duration uh, maybe someone die maybe someone born maybe some someone grow up what about the sample a sample is the portion of a population selected from the for, for the analysis the sample is a small group for instance if you want to say something about the uh, American people, I mean about uh, uh, the people who live in, in, in the continent, American continent, and they, about their height, uh, we can take, you know, kind of small groups from each country. We have uh, two groups, you know, population and sample. Uh, what about the population? Population, uh, as I say, this is a big group. Imagine that we have got in here the big group, uh, as you see in the big, big group we have got in here, and from this big group, uh, all these big group and, and uh, all the you know, individuals have an equal chance to to be to be uh, chosen from here. And uh, as you see to the right side here we have a sample, and this is the red uh, places. The red people are here. They are sampling. They are sampling. For instance, here we have a 300 million people, United States people, and we choose from there about 100 thousand maybe, yeah, 100 thousand people, and measure their height. Okay. As we see, all the items or individuals about which you want to draw the conclusion and sample a portion of the population of the items or of individual. 
uh, every individual or item from the frame has an equal chance of being selected you know you can uh, select everyone for instance in this group in 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 united states there are about 300 million people every people has an equal chance to be selected for their measurement for instance for a measurement for the weight for the measurement for uh, age for the measurement for their you know um their the gender, uh, about the, the, the family member, how many family members, their, their average salary, etc. The samples obtained from a table of random numbers or computer random number generators. Okay, we have a, two kind of, you know, uh, sampling practices. Uh, we have a wrong sampling practice and good sampling practices. Why is it wrong sampling practices? Let me say a little uh, practice about that. For instance, if you are uh, going to tell about the age of the, or I mean about the height of the people in, in, who live in the United States, we if we take from California the people about 100 people, 10,000 people, it doesn't matter, and we measure them you know, randomly, it will be a wrong sampling practice. Why? Because we don't care about the other. Uh, you know states we don't care about the age group and therefore this is a, a wrong sampling practice in 1936 US presidential election uh, literally digest uh, collected a sample size 10 million people which was heavily based I got a wrong uh, prediction but in 1980 trial of a Chrysler Corporation versus United States Environmental Protection Agency a very clean sample of 10 cars provided blue uh, bulletproof evidence okay uh, before this uh, before uh, going to the graphical statistics I would like to uh, you know make you familiar with uh, with uh, Excel tool where we have a uh, you know insert charts data analysis super histogram we will uh, you, you can choose if you would like to to demonstrate you know if you'd like to illustrate your data you can use this uh, tool from uh, from Excel okay uh, let's give a little definition about the data what's the data okay let's uh, talk about the objects the firstly what's the objects me people you and cars maybe you know telephone uh, people who live in, in in this country country you know uh, maybe computer and other things but everything is a object we uh, why we say this uh, them object this is a kind of things that we would uh, we would like to say something about that and these objects have their variables what's a variable for instance if you take into account the cars car is an object but in this in the car there are lots of objects for instance uh, their weight their weights their lengths uh, make uh, type color a cylinder I mean about uh, their you know vehicle cylinder year uh, maybe owner you know general owner all these things are variable why is it variable because this is variable it's a changing thing right? for instance in a one color weight is a 1.80 pound a uh, uh, 1.80 ton but in the next one maybe is a three ton maybe in the third one is a 2.5 tons um, etc okay uh, what kind of variables we have uh, the firstly we have a categorical variable i mean uh, this is a qualitative variable have values that can only be placed into categories such as yes or no major ar architectural style or for instance um, good bad uh, for instance we can say or uh, rural or urban okay kind of kind of variables but also we have a numerical variables numerical variables the quantity variables uh, which variables we can count for instance we can say about them uh, weight weights the people who live in in in, in the countries children are in, in a family Th these are a numerical variable numerical variable also divide in two groups we have a discrete variable variable arise from a counting process and uh, continuous variable arise from measuring process um, okay as we see here we have uh, two groups of variables categorical and numerical for the categorical we have an example of marital status political party eye color gender and um, the other things we, what we have and for the numerical variable we have a two categories uh, discrete cat uh, category and continuous category for the discrete we have a number of children uh, defects per product 
uh, and for the continuous we have a weight voltage widths um, you know lots of things we have you know even age also okay uh, levels of measurement what kind of measurements we have uh, no, uh, for, 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 for the variables a nominal skills classifies the uh, data into distinct category in which no ranking is in, implied for instance a personal computer ownership for instance do you have a computer yes or no this is a kind of nominal scale we cannot say which one is bigger than the other one because we have not yet a ranking process but also we have a type of stocks owned and this is kind of gross value other you know kind of stocks and also an internet provider for instance AT&T, Verizon, CityNet, KTV and uh, other you know uh, internet providers we have in, in, in the countries. Ordinal scale classifies data into distinct categories in which ranking is implied. Here we have a ranking process. For instance, at the university, student class designation we have. For instance, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. This is kind of, you know, ordered category. You know, this a freshman is a less than, you know, junior or sophomore okay, or senior. Product satisfaction. Product satisfaction can satisfy natural unsatisfied. For instance, if you have, you have a, a company and in this company you have uh, you, you this, this is a sales company, sales uh, you know department. In the sales department, you have a data about the customers and these customers divide into two, three groups. You know, satisfied customers, neutral customers, and unsatisfied customers. Okay, also we have a faculty rank, for instance, professor, associate professor, assistant professor, instructor, and maybe is a simple teacher. Okay, and also we have a kind of standard and poor bond rating. As you know, uh, in the countries, the country, you know, the government has a bond, it's kind of regularization for fiscal policy. Therefore, they sometimes they, they sell bonds and they buy bonds. Uh, I mean, uh, these stocks, uh, the government stocks, and they have their ratings. For instance, uh, AAA is a kind of very good bond rating, and this is always, you know, kind of liquid. As a uh, worse one, we have a 3D category, 2D category, 1D category, kind of things. And also, we have a student grades. These student grades, uh, we have a three, a five student grades, you know, kind of, this is also ranking. The best level of student grades is the A. And an interval scale is an ordered scale in which the difference between measurements is a meaningful quantity, but the measurements don't have a true zero point. And the ratio scale we have, a ratio scale is an ordered scale in which the difference between the measurement is meaningful quantity and the measurements have a true zero point. Okay, let's look at a little the example. For instance, uh, for the interval, we have a temperature in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit or Celsius or Fahrenheit. For instance, this is an interval because it has its, you know, zero point. We cannot say about that uh, temperature doesn't have a negative point. We have negative point. For instance, negative 5 uh, Celsius degree, negative 20 Celsius Fahrenheit uh, degree we have. Uh, also, we have a standard side exam score. This is also the interval score. And we have uh, also, uh, we have a ratio scale. The ratio scale has its, you know, zero point of starting. For instance, height. We cannot say we have a minus 10 centimeters or inch. Uh, height is, starts from, height starts from zero and up to, you know, uh, to the infinity. I don't know, uh, kind of height. And have people 1.82 meters. Okay. We can say about the six feet, for instance. Uh, about the weight, age, and salary, also uh, the, the same thing we can say. You know, they have their zero point. We cannot say we have a minus weight of something, for instance. If I have a telephone, my telephone has the appropriate weight, uh, some kind of pounds here, or maybe some kind of, you know, uh, pounds uh, it takes. Okay, uh, uh, visualizing categorical data, we have a bar chart. Uh, the, the first we have a bar chart. What's kind of what's a bar chart? Bar chart shows uh, each category the length of which represents the amount, frequency, or percentage of a value falling into a category which comes from the summary table or, ta or, or, or a variable. For instance, we can say about uh, banking reference. Uh, ATM automated live telephone drive through service at branch in person at branch and internet. We have a 
a kind of banking references and the people have a ranking references we can say 20 person 24 person have an internet uh, banking references or you know 41 person have a in person at branch references and if you want to uh, describe this data in the bar chart and bar chart will be as uh, in the right side we can see here uh, from the you know uh, f f from the measurement from the scale in the top in, in the bottom we can measure the scale for instance if you say the 24 and uh, you can see that uh, internet is a 24 if we take a little you know kind of you know line to here we can uh, very easily to measure the uh, percentage for the internet for about the ATM ATM is a 16 person you can see here yeah. or in a person at the branch and 41 person uh, another one, another visualizing categorical data, the pie chart. A pie chart is a circle broken up into slides that represent category. A pie chart is a kind of hundred person. It's a, if uh, and here the slicing, uh, the sl slices show that the percentage of a data, uh, the size of each slice of a pie varies according to the percentage in each category if you uh, you know give a glimpse to this bar chart easily you can see that uh, the, the high percentage for for uh, in person at branch uh, section okay yeah next one uh, visualizing uh, numerical data this is uh, a histogram histogram how we measure this histogram histogram is a frequencies table a, in a percentage histogram, the vertical axis will be defined to show the percentage of observation per class. Imagine that we have a kind of class and uh, from 10 to 20, three people, for instance, frequencies is three people, for instance, from 10 to 20 years old people uh, in a group, in a total group, we have a three. From 20 to 30, six people. From 30 to 45, uh, etc. And uh, in our group, there are, you know, in, in a whole, we have a 20 people and their frequencies are, you know, shown here. And their relative frequencies are there because if you take, you know, the percentage, the frequency of a 10, uh, 10 but less than 20, the three people, three, three uh, persons, if we divide it to the 20, we take, you know, 0 0.15. And if you take in six divided by twenty, we taking here thirty percent, uh, and uh, in a percent in a percentage, uh, it is straight in here. And all these, you know, people, you know, consist, uh, you know, uh, a part of a hundred person. If you would like to demonstrate this data in the histogram, age of students, we can easily uh, to you know to, to demonstrate in here from 10 to 20 the data is a you know how much three people is a frequency and here we have a percentage and the next one 25 how many people six people and the percentage is a 30 uh, per person okay we can see here and it, and uh, others also that in the same way okay next one is a visualizing two numerical variables scatter plot uh, this graphical visualizing is uh, kind of different from a previous one. Why? Because here we have a relationship between two data. For instance, we have the volume per day, cost per day. Volume per day illustrated in a x-axis point, but the cost per day illustrated in a, a y-axis. And if you uh, take a look at this, uh, you can easily see. For instance, 23. If you have a you know kind of you know number in the 23, you know and uh, reference for the 23 behind the 25 uh, you know for the 26 uh, for the 26 you know volume per day cost per day will be uh, or cost per, per day is 140 and etc this is our scatter plot this is for the you know cross section data if you have uh, you know visualizing two numerical variable for the time series plot uh, we can easily see here you, you imagine that we have a company uh, for instance, McDonald's, maybe the KFC and etc. These companies have their franchising. Okay, they they, they spread their franchising in the world by. For instance, in 996 they have uh, 43 franchising, or in a 97 they have you know uh, 54 per franchising. If you look at this scatter pool easily, you can uh, see that uh, the biggest franchising is in 2002. 
107 and the uh, smallest uh, smallest franchising is in the uh, 43996 looking at this scatter plot you can easily uh, know about the highest point and lowest point easily here we have an example if you would like to learn uh, statistics and uh, you can do this example little example at home and send me to the comments i will check them and uh, definitely give you answer if they right or wrong okay guys thank you for att for your attention if you would like to learn uh, statistics subscribe to our channel and wait our new classes thank you very much bye